Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be lowering the back of my truck using some 4 inch aluminum lowering blocks. It has 3 inch aluminum lowering blocks right now, but I want to get rid of this gap between the tire and the fender a bit. This will apply to people who don't have their trucks lowered at all as well. Uh, it's going to be the same process essentially except you don't have to remove any blocks because you don't have them in there already. Let me show you the lowering blocks and then we can get them back up in the air so I can show you how it's done. Okay, so here we have our lowering block kit. Uh, it comes with two U-bolts per side, one lowering block per side, all of the hardware that you need and the instructions to do the job. Uh, this is a four inch, two degree angle lowering block kit from Street Edge. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description where you can buy this. It's a pretty cheap way to get your truck to be lowered. I have seen some people talk about how 3-inch blocks are as far as you can go, which is what I'm currently running. I don't really know what's, what the truth is, but it shouldn't be an issue as long as you get angled blocks. Now that's so that you have your drive shaft pinion angle be correct, and it's especially important on the extended cab trucks. Now single cabs, not as important, just might as well have it. And as far as I could tell, most 4-inch blocks have the angle. This is what you want, 4-inch, 2-degree angle blocks. So let's just go ahead and start installing it. So now that the truck's up in the air, you can get a better idea of exactly how a lowering block works. Pretty much all it does is it spaces the axle upwards and it causes the wheels to be higher up, which means that when you set it back on the ground, you're going to have a lowered truck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and loosen the U-bolts on the ones that I can. I do actually have a bent U-bolt on one side because I didn't end up cutting the U-bolts, which I regret. Just a little note, when you're putting the blocks in, if you have angled blocks, you want the high side to be towards the back. If they're flat, you don't need to worry about it. Here you can see me pushing the axle forward to try and get the axle to sit on the lowering block. However, it's not possible right now because the drive shaft is actually bottomed out in the transmission and can't move forward anymore. So we had to do a bit of finagling to actually get it to fit. And by finagling, I mean using a ratchet strap and a bottle jack to actually get it to go in place.
So I've decided I'm not going to end up cutting the U-bolts because on this uh, set of U-bolts, they actually stick out less than on the 3-inch blocks. They're not going to be too much of an issue, I don't think. At a later date, I can always cut them if it ends up being a problem, but I don't think it will be. So it's been a bit since I actually lowered the truck onto the ground, it's been like a week or two. Just wanted to let the suspension settle a little bit after doing that. I also wanted to see if there would be anything wrong with it while driving. Um, I still have yet to have my tire hit the fender. I do have cut bump stops, but the tire would still hit the fender before the bump stops would hit the frame. So I don't think it's really too much of a concern to be this low for me. And I've hit some pretty big bumps and still no contact as far as I can tell or have felt. Um, it drives pretty much the same as it did before with the 3-inch and I overall have no complaints. Looks better, settled a bit more, it's a bit lower than the clip where I had just dropped it on the ground. But yeah, that's going to be all. So thanks for watching this video, I'll see you in the next one.